Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today it's, well, we're in the middle of a heat wave. Summer has arrived! So I'm going to do a, a classic British picnic thing. I'm going to make a scotch egg. So scotch eggs were invented, not in Scotland, but by posh London grocers Fortnum and Mason in 1738. Good grief. They're thought to have been based on an Indian dish called Nargisi Kofta, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, which I might make sometime because it looks interesting. But um, yeah, so there's, there's nothing to do with Scotland at all. But I'll tell you what, the Fortnum and Mason, they still sell their Scotch eggs. And I've had some from them and they are the best ones I've ever, ever had. And that includes the ones that I make myself. So there you go. What an accolade. Fortnum and Mason, by appointment to Keith Cooks. Yes. Anyway, I'm wondering if you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, etc. And let's get on with it. Scotch that egg. Oh yeah. Right, first job, boil your eggs. So I'm gonna make four Scotch eggs. Um, so I've got four eggs and a spare one, which we'll need for doing the coating, the breadcrumb coating. I didn't explain, did I? A Scotch egg is a boiled egg wrapped in like sausage meat breadcrumbed and deep fried and sounds pretty unhealthy but it's actually marvellous uh, once in a while will not kill you. I'm aiming to have a runny jammy yolk in mine because that's how I like them. Mrs Keith Cooks doesn't like them like that she likes a firmer yolk uh, so I've marked her eggs with crosses hopefully we won't get them mixed up. Right. Chuck them in a pan not a big pan just enough to accommodate them and cover with cold water. Stick it on the stove, bring it to the boil. So I was inspired to do this, well, first of all, the weather, perfect picnic weather. Um, and also I was in a local village which actually has a real butcher, we don't. And they make their own pies and pasties and scotch eggs. And a handmade scotch egg is a thing of beauty. Unlike anything you get in a supermarket, don't ever buy supermarket or service station scotch eggs. They're just disgusting. They really are. They're awful. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, I had this um, uh, scotch egg, handmade scotch egg that I was very looking forward to. And uh, actually I was a little disappointed, I must admit. So I ate half of it and let Mrs. Keith Cooks try the other half. She actually liked it. But there's no accounting for taste. Anyway, I'm doing my own because I really want a decent scotch egg. So off we go. When it's boiling turn it down to a simmer and for the runny jammy yolk let it simmer for four minutes and for the firmer one I'll give it seven minutes. When that time's elapsed remove them from the water and plunge them into a bowl of iced water and that will stop them cooking any further. Okay there's the boiled eggs I'm going to let them cool down for about ten minutes then I'll peel them and here's our meat. Now, I always like to confuse you by giving you lots of options. You want about 400 grams of minced pork, basically, or sausage meat, or a mixture. So you could get your favourite sausages. Um, I recommend Cumberland or Lincoln sausages, and just take the stuffing out of them, throw away the skins. Um, or get pork mince and um, mess about with it yourself, or make your own pork mince. I've got some pork chops, nice chunk of fat on the end, on the edges there, so that'd be great. Uh, but there is a bit of bone, so I need to trim that off and then cut the meat into chunks that will go through the mincer feed tube. Okay, let's mince it. I think we've got some fat clogging that up, so I'm going to have to take the front off and give it a scrape. It's actually a great idea in weather like this to freeze everything, freeze the, the scrolly bit and freeze your meat. Not completely freeze them, but just get them really, really cold because that works better, but I forgot. So I'm going to peel my eggs. Not all of them actually, just the uh, hopefully soft boiled ones that are for me. And I'll do Mrs. Keith Cook's ones separately when you're not looking. 
the temptation to cut this open and see if I've really got a runny yolk is quite strong. But I shall resist. Okay, I'm going to make up the seasoning mix. So I've got an empty jar and a teaspoon of salt. Teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of thyme, half a teaspoon of sage. And you can mess about with these flavourings in any way that you like, because I do. <laughs> uh, but the secret ingredient, a chicken stock cube. Actually, I'll put that straight in with the meat, because it's easier. Fortnum and Mason included anchovies in their original mix, I think. Right, just give that a good old mix and get a latex glove and we'll just mix that all together. I've seen recipes where they add a bit of um, sautéed onion and also the ones that add garlic which is a definite, definite no-no for this recipe and uh, oh breadcrumbs you would have you would have breadcrumbs or rusk if you used sausage meat that was probably not a bad thing but um, well I'm not <laughs> okay that'll do divide that into four equal bits right we'll uh, start assembling scotch eggs so get your boiled eggs and just dry them off a little bit. Not, not completely, because if they are a bit moist, then you can roll them in flour, that will stick, and that will help the meat to stick as well. It's all about making things stick. So, get a bowl of meat. Um, they, they, these are actually a little bit bigger than I would normally do, but never mind, they'd be lovely. And just roll them out into a kind of disc that looks big enough to enclose a boiled egg. And squish it all over and smooth it so it kind of sticks to itself without any seam. Sometimes tricky this step. I reckon that will do. Right, got a little production line going on. I've got beaten egg and breadcrumbs. Well, I haven't got the beaten egg yet. So. I'm actually using two eggs for this. Not the one as previously advertised. Right, roll your scotch egg in it. Get it fully coated and then in the breadcrumbs. These are homemade breadcrumbs, nice and coarse. You could use panko, or you could use, you know, you can, you can buy like breadcrumbs and seasoned and coloured and they're really smooth and they're really bright orange and they're really not right for a proper scotch egg. So, okay, so that's double coated, that'd be super crispy. Let's do the other one. Now we're going to cook the scotch eggs. So you want a pan with oil in it um, or a deep fat fryer. Uh, if you're using a pan, don't overfill it, really not more than a third full, as long as it will cover the eggs when you put them in. And you want to heat that to 170 degrees Celsius and pop the eggs in. Just keep them moving, make sure they're not sticking on the bottom. And after about five minutes, they, they should be like golden brown. And if you stick a thermometer in, the internal temperature should be at least 63 degrees Celsius and then take them out, drain them, let them rest for 10 minutes or so. They're, they're nice warm, you don't want them stinking hot out of the fryer. We've got fairly decent, slightly runny yolks there, so um, that is good, and the whites are cooked. And now it's taster time with me. So it's me eggs, looking pretty good, actually. I really do wish I could figure out how to get a perfect yolk like that every time but well I haven't managed it yet well that's um, acceptable to me so mmm oh that crunch 
crispy crunch of the breadcrumbs and that meat is really tasty and the egg is an egg. So, <laughs> what more could you want? Mm -hmm. So, homemade scotch eggs, if you've never had one like this, do try it because it'll change your mind about scotch eggs forever. This is the real deal. Thanks for watching and see you next time.